is back and we're talking earlier what this is all about memory yes. and just start out where'd you get the idea to talk about memory and how to pull this out well there's a great movie out you may have heard of it captain marvel and oh, she's yes. upside down trying to retrieve these forgotten memories and i thought well how far would someone go to try to remember something now is there anything to that being upside down <laughs> I did actually look up some research. Um, most of the upside down research tends to look more at spinal uh, benefits, okay. which I know you're having on the show. Um, much less about actual memory in the brain, though there is something to be said about blood flow and how that can maybe activate some of your memories. Oh, interesting. So there is something <laughs> possibly, to that? Possibly, possibly, yeah. I mean, I like hanging upside down for trapeze, but I don't, know, I don't do it for my memory. <laughs> but not every time somebody has a glitch in their memory does it necessarily mean that they're getting into a dangerous area, right? I mean, some of us just forget things because we're really, you know, busy. <laughs> and sometimes it's good for our brain to forget. I mean, imagine if we remembered every single detail. In fact, that's one of my first tips about remembering something, that a recent study found that people who remember very rich details of information, so let's say you walk on set, you know, like the car trick, you want to remember all the colors, you want to remember every single car that you were seen. Those uh, people with that memory personality type are more likely to forget things because it overloads them. And researchers actually found that people who remember just the facts, I did A, B, and C, actually keep those memories much longer. So when you talk about Alzheimer's and dementia, the factual memory type of people will be less likely to experience memory loss. So are there, do we learn this like along our life or are we born with it? Because it sounds like there's different ways that we break it down. There are. I mean, there's probably a greater, a greater propensity. So some of us may feel like we want to en engage or encode that sensory information. We're like, oh, it smelled so good here, or those colors are bright. But you can definitely train your memory. You can train your memory to focus more on the facts. What did I do first, second, and third? And that sequential memory taps the front of our brain, and that's the one you want to keep active to prevent memory loss. Can you think of your brain as like your phone or your computer? Like every now and then you need to just forget stuff, delete and clean out some space. Because, like, you talk about being overloaded with stuff, so maybe you remember too much. Is it better to, like, okay, I want to forget just so I can maybe be like more Like a purge? Peace, Is that or, what you're saying? Like a yes. little mental purge? or? Um, yeah, there's a lot of research that suggests when you look at the mental health field, too, that sometimes we encode a lot of negative emotional memories, and that can be detrimental for our brains because you don't want to always have a negative association. So you might think, oh, I saw this, I have this negative association. So our brain is actually very efficient at saying, I don't want to remember that anymore. But that's one of my second tips is actually, if you do want to remember something, attach a positive emotion to that. So researchers found that when they had a little reward, when someone said, uh, you know, they were playing a video game and they found a gold coin, they were more likely to remember the information around that environment with the gold oh. coin was. So even if you don't see gold coins in everyday life, give yourself that kind of uh, positive association like, you know, I felt really good after I did X. So you're more likely to remember that experience. So how would you translate that to, and I don't want to not get to number three, but how would you translate that to, for example, you're, you're studying some information and you want to remember something on this card. What would I do to tell myself I'm having a positive moment? How can you can I attach it to a positive memory. So you can, first of all, connect that. So I read something about magic. Um, you know, just like Eric was saying, oh, I remember this amazing magic show that I saw when I was nine years old. And that positive association, that positive memory brings in your amygdala, your brain's emotional center, and, be, and you'll be more likely to remember, hey, I just did a show about memory. The guy's name was Eric. He's got something happening tomorrow evening. And that's going to consolidate and keep that memory more lasting. Okay, and then you have another tip as well. I do, and this is kind of fun. It's about working backwards. And oftentimes we, we try to remember the memory when someone says, hey, what did you do last weekend? And you think, yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> right. And a great tip to do that is to work backwards. So start by saying, you know, was that something on my bucket list? Or was that an everyday event? And was I with my family? Was I with a friend? So start from sort of a global memory and then work your way down rather than trying to work from the details kind of bottom up that way. And researchers found that when people reconstruct their memory working from the general to the specific, they're far more likely to remember that, oh, that's that event. That's very interesting. <laughs> what about if you're preparing for a test or something like that? Same thing, maybe? general and then work your way down for the specific part of it? Yeah, cued recall is very commonly practiced too, and that cue often is something general. So if you're trying to remember something, you can think, what category was that question falling under? You know, was it category A, B, or C? Once you've got that, then work down. Now, was that it, what subcategory was that next? And then you'll be more likely to think, yep, I got it now, rather than generally thinking, what did the professor say in class? What did the teacher say in class? That's that specific details not going to help you find your way back to that memory. That's really interesting. <laughs> So, yeah. 
so interesting. <laughs> and I know you have a lot of resources on your website too, yes. from books, and then obviously you speak and things like that. And that's tracyalloway.com. And I just I'm fascinated every time that you're on because we learn so much. And there's your website there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like it's just it's amazing because yes. when it comes to memory, it's one of those things that. I'm just, it's, I could remember certain things and other things you can't. And yeah, it's so astounding which things we choose to retain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And some, and some of that's protective. <laughs> right, right. Well, thanks again. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, stick around. More to come right after this.